Hi guys and welcome to Hack Explorer. In today's episode, we are going to look at a method to connect your computer at your home from anywhere in the world. Yes, by using a tool called NGROC, which is very easy to use. So continue watching and welcome to Hack Explorer. So let's see what NGROC is. So NGROC, as the definition says, it exposes local servers behind NATs and firewalls to the public internet over secure tunnels. Which means NGROC is a simple tool that actually helps you to expose your server onto the internet securely. Uh, let's see like what is exposing means. So typically you will have a network like this. This could be your host, okay? This could be a laptop or your server or your Raspberry Pi, which is running any operating system. The thing is, you will be behind a router or in this case, a firewall. So a firewall IP usually be a NAT IP. Actually, what NAT means is you have a public IP exposed externally and an internal IP. So the mapping will be happening through NAT. So if this client wants to connect to this host, how do you configure it? You have actually two options. The most pro pro common options, I'll just mention it over here. One is port forwarding. Actually, you have a public port open over here and a private port open here. When the user connects to the public IP address, this will actually map it to the local IP address that you need. So just imagine you have a web server over here and you want your clients to connect. That port forwarding will make sure all the web traffic will forwarded to this particular machine over here so that you actually have to configure in the router or the firewall the problem is this you could do in your home network you can go and configure your own router by reading the manual or something but you won't be able to do this in a public network or if you're in a corporate environment another option is uh, if a clients actually want to connect to this one they can actually use VPN services so VPN services actually uh, as we know because we are using a lot of VPN services in this pandemic period uh, it's like simply and install the VPN software over here and you can see you can actually connect make a connection through the VPN so whatever the service it will be like just like the machine in your local network so you have port forwarding or VPN those were the two options so but remember the problem is we can't use this in most of the situations so how does NGROC help you so NGROC is one of the tools that you can help you in this type of situation where you want to securely expose your server or the host to the internet so remember always when you're exposing something you'll be exposing a service as I mentioned web service or email service Remember, it'll be always some kind of a port. For example, if this is the service that you're going to run, so this is a web server because you can see it's HTTP. So once you install the NGROC client, NGROC client will actually create a tunnel with NGROC.com cloud service, okay? So what happens here is actually, once you register with the NGROC and install and register with the website, you will get a domain name like this and a specific port number that you want to connect to. So this particular address will be actually given to this client. So once the client connect to this NGROC address, he'll be securely connecting to our network through this tunnel. So this is the secure tunnel we were talking about. So NGROC is mostly used by web developers or application developers where they have a particular web service or they want to publish their demo sites to their client. So they quickly register one of these things, NGROC client, and make sure they send the client this particular IP address so they can actually check their website before they actually publish it. So if you want to publish externally, that's the most secure way that you can have. And is this a free service? Yes. This particular tunneling, yes, for one connection. But if you want more connections, you have to pay for them. That's the business model. Fortunately, in our case, we can actually use this for many options. You can publish your test SMTP server, or if you want to make sure any port that you want. Our idea is we are going to like show how to expose a client into this one and get the service from there. Okay, right. So enough with the explanations now what we'll do is actually we'll go and install this client and see how to get this working it's very fast it won't take this much time as the explanation it'll be very fast believe me so i actually have a kali running on this side so you have to visit this ngrog.com so once you first enter this site actually you have to create an account once you create an account with your, your email address you will be landing in this page so here actually we want to run a particular service. So I'm going to expose this Linux virtual machine into internet. 
So we have to download the client to your machine. So it's supporting Mac, Linux, Windows, even ARM distribution. So this will be supporting your Raspberry Pis. So the best thing is if you are like running this on Windows, it'll be actually showing you run for Windows because I'm running Kali. It says the client that you need is client and you will get the steps on how to install this particular server. Okay. So first of all, we have to install it and actually connect this with our account. That's how it actually uh, maps how many connections that we have. Okay. So I'll take my command prompt and uh, let me show you how to install this one. So let me see where I am. Yeah, I'm in home folder. So I need to go to downloads and yeah. So I have the ngrox table file over here. So it'll, it's a zip file. So first of all, you have to do is unzip ngrok. Okay, so we have ngrok file over here. So once you have this executable downloaded, you have to do some one more small thing. Go here and you can see the commands already that I have given is over here. And next one is you have to run this exact command on your computer because uh, it's created for your account. I'm going to paste the selection. Okay, so auth token is saved actually. Now actually that's all with the installation. Two steps and you are completed. Now the next thing is you have to run a particular service on your computer and expose it. Let me show you this one. So I'm going to use actually another command window and I'm going to go to the same, I think I'm in the home for the downloads and I'm going to create a small web server on this host machine. So this command, the Python HTTP server, this is a very common method that you can actually create a small web server and uh, you can just simply copy and paste. If you have Python, it will be running page running in port 80. If you want to access this from your local machine, actually you can check it. If this is running correctly, 127.0.0.1. Yep, I actually published my folder and I'm exposing everything. But if I go to this folder cafe, this is my small website which is running. So it's pretty small code, but it, it can run a whole website. So I can't give this to my client. So I need to make sure this is exposed outside. So what I'm going to do is, since my web server is running from 80, so you can see there are three connections coming from 127.0.1. I'm going to use ngrok dot slash ngrok. This is the execution method. I'm going to say HTTP protocol over 80. Okay. Once you're connected like this, it'll show you a name that you've given to your plan. And this is the forwarding IP. So you can see whoever is connecting to this particular domain name, he'll be connecting to this particular address. Let's check this one. So I'm copying the link address. Okay, I'm going to paste this address over here. So this is I'm trying from my host machine. Okay, now you can see I got a connection from here. And if I go here, Okay, so my connections are working and I can see, okay, there are some problems where I can see stuff. Oh yeah, it's, it's actually loading one by one. Okay, and the JS files. Yep, it's loading one by one. I think home will be loading again. It's actually loading early. It actually had some connections, but here you can see somebody's connecting from outside. So this is the most popular way that they're using. Now the next important thing, how do you actually run a SSH server, the juicy stuff? How do you connect to your local machine? I'm going to clear this. I'm going to stop this also control C. Next, we'll try to open SSH connection. So this will be the fun part where you can actually connect to your remote computer. In this section, we'll be opening a SSH service. So Linux, the most popular way you can use it uh, to open a SSH server. In Kali, actually, you can easily install it. Here, actually, I'm going to use the sudo service SSH start. Yeah, you might get this message. Uh, you can say status and you can see I'm running an open BSD SQL server. This should be running on port 22. Okay, now this one earlier you can see we use http if you are other than http if you are running any port you can actually ask uh, the question what are the, the ports that you have yeah http tls or okay. so but if you are opening any other port you can say you had to use the port tcp so i'll just mention tcp 
P22. This actually what happens is you it will expose your SSH server. So until this window is open, your SSH connectivity will be there. So if you're having a remote server or a Raspberry Pi or a host computer, if you want to connect, this is the IP address that you have to remember. So this is the most popular way I connect to my Raspberry Pi at my home. So I have something running like this. And this thing is always random This uh, because I'm using free service. Right, so let's copy this address. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to oh, copy selection. Use a SHH client. So let's get my SHH client over here. So I'm actually using CMD over here. Uh, you can use OpenSH client on Windows also, but this is my one of my favorite tools. CMD, which is the command line that is having a lot of options. So SSH okay uh, my username is Kali at and this is the thing that you have to give so here actually you can't give the port number like this dash p and your port number so once you give this one yes it's asking this for my first connection and it's asking for my password and I'm connected to my Kali machine over the internet. The idea is you just have to give your port number that you should open and make sure this is connected. Okay, let me type my IP just to show you. So it will actually show you my local IP even though I'm connected to this one because I'm inside the Kali session right now. So this is how you can actually connect to your localhost machine. So I have Android phone with NetHunter installed and whenever I want to connect to that one over a public network, I just turn on ngrok, get my SSH uh, public IP and just connect it to, from my local machine. So I can work it in a desktop. If I'm not in a Wi-Fi environment, I get the same IP range. So I hope you learned something from this episode. And if there's any questions about this tool, please post it on the comments below. And yeah, have fun with this tool. Thank you.